Hi, I'm Matt Freeman, bass player for Rancid, and you're listening to Low and Behold. Hi, Matt. Who do you think makes up the best rhythm section and why? My two favorite rhythm sections, the ones I think I've been influenced by the most, are John Entwistle and Keith Moon of The Who, and Cliff Williams and Phil Rudd of ACDC. With The Who, if you listen to those live records like Live at Leeds or Live at the Isle of Wight is a good example, they're just going crazy, but they're so tight and they keep it together and they're complimenting each other and they're really just, they're keeping those songs down. At the same time, you think they're gonna go off the tracks at any minute, it's like really exciting, but they always keep it together. Phil Rudd and Cliff Williams are also, they're just really tight, but in a different way, just like locked in and it just, it's just great. And I like the tempos and just locked in and I've been really influenced in that. And that's what I try to do, like me and Brandon, the drummer for Rancid, we just try to like, you know, just lock in and just get a good tempo going and it just makes everything better. Tell us about the bass bunker. So back during the pandemic, um, when everyone was locked down, uh, Brandon Studdickert from Rancid actually suggested that I just put something on Instagram, me playing along to like a Rancid song or something. And I did that and I did a few of them and it was a lot of fun. Uh, but people kept asking me, you know, to keep doing it. And so I finally just did it again. I'm just playing along to Rancid songs. I got some stuff in there where I show people how to do stuff. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a chance for me to sort of show people, you know, what I'm doing up close. So I really enjoy it. What do you recommend as a solid daily practice to keep improving as a musician? So one of the things I do daily is I practice bass without the amplifier, without it plugged in. I do both, but usually I start off just getting the bass and putting a metronome on and setting it for whatever, and then just doing scales or, you know, picking exercises or just basically anything that I can keep in time. And I started doing that when I was a kid because I didn't have an amplifier for the longest time. I had to borrow one for the high school I went to. But they, that really helped me out a lot because if you can get a good sound out of the bass just with your hands and manipulating the string and like, you know, you hear it, you're more focused, you have to really listen for it. And then with the metronome, that just is gonna give you better time. And so I've always done that. And because if you get a good tone out of the bass, then it's gonna sound great. The amplifier is just gonna amplify that or whatever pedals are gonna make it sound the way they are, but it all really starts with you and your hands. How did you come up with the bass solo for Maxwell Murderer? And who was saying motherfucker at the end? So when we recorded um, And Out Come the Wolves, we recorded the bass and drums together first. Me and Brett Reed, you know, sitting in the room and going through the songs and we recorded all of them. And then, you know, we added on the guitars and vocals and everything. And we all sort of knew we were gonna have some sort of bass solo in that Maxwell Murder song. So towards the end of the session, I went in like first thing in the morning and they cranked it up and I just sort of did that. I wasn't even sure they were recording. I just sort of popped it off. That was pretty good. And then we did it again. And I think we used the first one, but um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I did it. I've been playing, but for weeks by then though, you know, recording and touring and stuff. So, you know, I was pretty warmed up and uh, I'm pretty sure Lars says motherfucker at the end. <laughs> How do you approach songwriting within Rancid in terms of bass contribution? So a lot of times with Rancid, we're all sitting in a room just like, you know, writing together. Usually with the bass, you know, I hear something that comes with me, no matter what the vocals or the chorus is, is doing, you know, with the drums, I try to fit it in with the drums, obviously. And, uh, you know, maybe the guitar lines trying to mimic that. It, it all depends on the song. Mostly I'm just trying to get something that sounds good and, and fits in with the song. You often switch from pick to fingers, as well as picking areas within the same song. How did you come up with that? Uh, well, as far as picking goes, you get different sounds from different parts of the bass. You know, if you play up towards the neck, which I do a lot, the string's a little softer, so I can play that really fast stuff like that and sort of open it up and make it really sound like, you know, even, I guess. And then when I go back to the back of the instrument, I'm palm muting quite a bit. Um, not a lot, just sort of resting my hand on there and just so taking the edge off a little bit just to bring it down dynamically. In Rancid, we really think about dynamics a lot, you know, bringing it up, bringing it down. So I sort of do that on the bass. Usually, you know, in verses, I'll bring it back a little bit and then in the loud parts I'll play up here. And all the fast sixteenth note stuff I'm playing up here. I don't know how I came up with it. I had a really good teacher that showed me all kinds of different ways to, you know, play the bass, all kinds of different tricks and stuff. And that's where I got the palm muting thing from. And when I mean that, like laying my palm just sort of on the back of the bass and then hitting the string. Uh, as far as using my fingers go, uh, I play some stuff with my fingers. That was just sort of evolved a lot of times, you know, playing these songs over and over again. You know, you're playing and then maybe one part you use your fingers, you know, like to really emphasize or something or 
pop something or you know sometimes i'll just do like a chord like that or you know just all different ways to do it uh i didn't really consciously come up with it, it was more of a thing where you just you play so i play so much you just you know just figure it out it works got any quirky pre-show habits or rituals you want to share the only pre-show ritual i really do is i walk up on the stage a few minutes before we're going to play 10 15 minutes or something and i'll just when the stage is dark and we'll just sort of be in the background and i'll just sort of look around the stage look at the crowd sort of take it all in like get acclimated to the heat because sometimes you know backstage is air conditioning and you know it's hotter in the in the front there you know i'll talk to the crew ask them how they're doing you know what's going on anything crazy happen with the opening bands or you know just sort of like basically sort of check in you know like I'm starting to, my shift, basically. That's what I do. How important do you think it is for a bass player to have a grasp of music theory? I think the more music theory you learn, the better. The more you understand how music works and different kinds of music and how it comes together, that's just going to make you a better player and give you bigger ears. You know, I listen to everything. I think music, you know, you've got to listen, you've got to hear things no matter what it is. Yeah, I think music theory is important. I don't think it's the most important thing. I think, you know, feel and, you know, listening and, you know, creativity is really important too, but music theory definitely helps that. 35 years into the game, what keeps you motivated? What keeps me motivated after 35 years is the fact that I just love to play music and I'll always play music and it's a gift. And I'm real lucky to be in a band like Rancid and to be able to travel the world and play music. And so that's what keeps me motivated is I just love it. Okay, time for some rapid fire. Offspring or Green Day? Green Day. Favorite bass riff of all time? Back in the 70s, there was this sitcom on TV Barney Miller, it was a comedy. And the opening theme song had this great bass line. Jazz or precision? I love jazz basses and I love precision basses. Switch back and forth, but if I had to pick one, it'd be the precision. It's just all around amazing instrument. You can do anything with it. Thanks for having me on Lo and Behold, I really appreciate it.